Hi, we're now looking at relational and logical operations. We looked at arithmetic operations in our first proper video on Python. Uh, those are focused on numbers. These are focused on Boolean values. Okay, I've got Replit open. Of course, you can use any IDE which you want to, but the interactive shell is quite useful for demonstrating operators because they're usually just a very small section of a proper program. So we've looked at, as I say, arithmetic operators, which work on numbers. These ones work more on Boolean values. So a Boolean value is either true or false. It's a data type which is either true or false. So we'd write true capital letters and then false like that. We can set variables to Boolean values, maybe something like logged in equals true. Once you've logged in, you might set that variable to be true so you can keep track of the status. Because Boolean values can only be one of two values, either true or false, we can easily map this to binary, which is how computers work. And so really, true could be said to be one and false can be zero. So if I try true plus true, press enter, I get two, because really true is representing one, and so we're doing one plus one. Likewise, if I do false plus true, false is uh, zero, true is one, and we should get us one. I think that's important to have in the back of your mind. Okay, so first of all, we have our relational operators, also called comparison operators. I'm writing a comment there with a, a hash symbol, so nothing's going to happen. Um, and we have, I believe, six of these. Let me show you them. The whole idea of these operators is to test between two bits of data. So a similar way of, of explaining this is just to show you. So our first one we can do, if we do maybe five is less than seven, or the less than sign is a relational operator. It's comparing two bits of data called the operands either side of it. It's comparing five to seven. Is five less than seven? It is. So this will evaluate to true. And relational operators always evaluate to Boolean values, so either true or false, which correspond to um, one or zero. We can do the opposite of this for greater than sign. So is five greater than seven? No, it's not. So I get false that time. If I do something like five is less than five, I should get false because five is not less than five, it's equal to five. So if we want to do a more inclusive operation, we can do five is less than or equal to five. So the less than or equal to sign, we can't do the little underline like you might do on paper. We follow it with an equal sign like this. So this will be true. Conversely, if I do five is greater than or equal to five, the other way around, this is also true. Um, so notice how the equal sign always comes after the uh, less than or greater than sign, it's not like five. It's not, it doesn't give a nice arrow, unfortunately, like this. This would be an error. This isn't a, a valid construct in Python. We get a, a syntax error. We've broken the rules by putting the equal sign before the greater than sign. So those are four of our relational operators down, which is nice. The other two relate to actually being equal to. So we know already that um, to set a variable, we set the variable for logging in. Uh, we could do a name equals uh, whatever. That is setting a variable, right? We've, we've, the operator for setting a variable is just a single equal sign. So if we're trying to say what is name, if we're trying to compare name to um, this random string, we can't use the single equal sign because this is assigning the data to the variable name. So instead we have to use a double equal sign. So if we do name equals equals, let's do a proper name like that press enter, we're now comparing the variable name to this string, which is false because John does not match up with this random string. So something like six equals equals six would be true, and something like six equals equals seven would be false. So it works how you'd expect it to, and we can have variables either side, we can have any data type we want to either side of this operator. The opposite of this equals to comparison operator is not equals to, and we do this with a exclamation mark before our first equal sign. So it's a little bit confusing because like I say, we can't use a single equal sign for a comparison, but yet it's used in the not equals and also the greater than and less than equal and equal to signs as well. So anyway, uh, but that's what it is, not equals. We have an exclamation mark and equals. So not equals six will give us false because six does equal six. Whereas if I do six not equal seven, this will give us true because they are not equal. So those are our relational operators. We'll use these a lot in conditions in looking at loops and also selection statements. Okay, let's now look at our, well, I was gonna say Boolean, but logical operators, which are also called Boolean operators. These also evaluate to true and false. They evaluated Boolean values, but really they are Boolean because if you've done any logic or Boolean logic in particular, we have and, or, and not. So these are three, operators used in Boolean logic. Like I say, 
Boolean maps to binary, which is why it's used in computers, and we can do all sorts of logic to run programs really using just these three operators. Unlike our relational operators, these need to have operands, need to have data, which is Boolean. So I can't do something like um, not 17, press enter. I mean, I get false, but it's not really telling us much. Instead of they're designed to be used, if I do something like not, so by the way, it's lowercase, not uppercase, so I do something like not um, false. What not does is do the opposite of what we're doing. So if, it's, if we're saying not false, I want to get true. If I'm saying not true, I want to get false. I can also use zero and one. So not zero will give me one or true, but not one will give me zero or false. But I can't do something like not five, as I tried at the top. Uh, I mean, it gives us false, but it's not really working how it should be working. We use truth tables to show all the values of Boolean expressions. I'll put the really simple truth table up for not now, but we've covered it just in our code. So not as an operator only works with one operand, only one bit of data which should follow it. So here zero is the operand, it follows it. But we also have or and and, which both work with two operands either side of it. So let's do or first of all. So or will evaluate true or return true when either side is true. So if I do true or false and press enter, I get true because the left hand side of or is true. Despite the right-hand side being false, it doesn't mind, it's still gonna return true because one of the sides is true. If I do false, false or false, this will be false because neither side is true. And conversely, true or true will be true because both sides are true, even if it only needs one. Uh, I can, for completeness, we can put the truth table up as well, which is this one, um, with the exception of if I do false or true, just the opposite of the one at the top, uh, it's also true because one side is true. Okay, let's do and. And is more picky because and will only return true if both sides are true. So if I do true and true, press enter, if this gives me true, but any other combination, and we can put the truth table up as well, will be false because it needs both sides to be true. And hopefully you'll have a play around with this yourself. Um, it's quite easy to have errors, especially because I instinctively always do capital letters for, um, for Boolean operators because other languages do it in capital letters, but this it doesn't like this, it's got to be lowercase, I get a syntax error if I do a even one uppercase letter for and. And because these have two operands, if I do something like false or without the second operand, again, it doesn't like this, it needs to have two operands to be able to work. Okay, so this is all well and good, but the power does come once we start to combine our relational and Boolean operators and put them into conditions in loops and selection constructs as we'll do in future videos. So uh, let's set some variables here just to play around with. Let's do A, B, and C. By the way, you can use, I'll show you this, you can assign multiple variables on one line by using commas, um, which is a little bit quicker sometimes. Let's do five, seven, and 12, press enter. So here, I could have done this on three different lines, but I've set five to A seven to B and 12 to C, like that. Um, that's a little tip if you want to uh, save some space. So we can do something like not A is less than C, and let's see what this evaluates to. So first of all, inside the brackets will be evaluated first, like normal maths. So A is less than C, is five less than 12? Yes it is, so this will be true, but we're doing not true then, which will be false. So it works like that. I could do something like A not equals B, or um, true or true, and let's see what happens here. So first of all, let's do each side individually. Left-hand side, a not equals b, well five does not equal seven, so this bit is true. So actually, even without looking at this, this would be true, but then, um, because only one side needs to be true in all, but then here, uh, true or true would be true as well. So this one would be true, but we could just look at one side to get that answer already. We can do expressions with just zeros and ones. Of course, we can't use any other number. It won't really work as we expect because they don't map to any other number. Let's have a look at this one. So we've got, first of all, left-hand side, not one or zero. Let's do one or zero first, it's sort of in the bracket. So one or zero, this is gonna give us one because we have one on one of the sides. So this would be true or one. And we're doing not true, so it becomes false. Other side. Um, in fact, we don't even need to look at the other side because if we have on with an and, one side is false, then the other side doesn't matter because it's going to evaluate false anyway. We could check the other side just for completeness. So we've got, first of all, not one here, which is zero, and then one and zero would be zero anyway. So both sides are false and it evaluates to false. This try now is a little bit more about prediction than actually programming yourself. So for question one, have a look at these four snippets and try and figure out what they would evaluate to, what they would be 
what they'd show on screen if you put them into the interactive shell having assigned the three variables at the top. And for question two, have a look at this small program for passwords and try and figure out, similar to question one really, what the final value of is correct would be based on a sequence of user input of Big Ben, Big Ben and Alice. So see, see if you can figure out what would be going on if you ran this program.